let's talk about access modifiers. Alright, we find us back in Taylor once more. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about access modifiers or access modifiers. I sometimes pronounce the word access a little bit weird, okay? I mean the way that in accessibility, that's the access or access I mean. Okay, listen, <laughs> you can make fun of my accent, it doesn't matter. But what we talk about over here is specifically the public, the static, and what else can we put there? And you will after this particular video, you will know what that means and well, why this is interesting or not. So when we go into our dog class, first of all, of course, we're using the same code that we've used in the previous video. So if you don't have that, you can, of course, check that one out and basically download it. Or if you still have it, even better, that would be perfect. Now we're going to start with the fields because we can change the accessibility of fields. And the idea here is that basically a public field is accessible from anywhere and changeable. Right now, this is specifically for fields. I say changeable because because we remember over here in the age, we were able to modify that particular field directly and usually fields or changeable methods. You know, you can't really change a method. So, yeah, it's it's publicly accessible, but it's not like I can just change the birthday method from somewhere else, even though something like that we're going to see in, in just a little bit. But that's a little bit different still. Now, the next keyword to know here is the protected keyword. Boom. This is protected. Now, what does that mean? Well, this means that this is accessible from in, in subclasses. I'm going to explain that in just a second. And the same package. That also means sort of package uh, private. And the idea of package means that if we were to now say Benji dot, you can see name is no longer available to us. If I do name, you can actually see hover over this. It says that it has protected access. So we can either make it public or there's a couple of other things where we, we could rename the the um reference something like that but that's not none of that is basically interesting what's interesting here is that protected basically available in subclasses the idea here is that we've seen in the introduction to ob object oriented programming that we for example had like an animal class at the top and then we had biped animals and quadruped animals and then below we had humans and then we had dogs and cats and things like that and the idea is that you can build a sort of a hierarchy of classes that inherit from each other. We'll see this literally in the next video. We're going to see exactly what that entails. And the idea is that protected means that they can then be used, like the fields or methods in that case, could then be used by subclasses. So that's the next one. And then the highest sort of accessibility level would be private, which in this case means that it is accessible only within this class. So now the age variable right here is only accessible within this class. And if we were to go to the main class, we can see we would now get an error right here because, well, this is now private, meaning we can't change this anymore. Now you might say, why would I ever make something private? Well, first of all, it's actually quite interesting where the age variable over here, we should probably not be able to simply change this like this right equals 100 so that's fair so we can maybe agree okay maybe we do want to make this private that's fair and i think that that's an okay idea now we're just thinking you know well that's all fine and well so we can no longer do this so let's comment it out but now we have the issue that uh, we can't even display the age anymore so what do we do now well when we have private variables what we do is we make something called a getter and sometimes even a setter so those are specific methods which are, I don't want to say predefined, but basically they can set the age and get the age. So the idea is that for a getter, right, if we were to make a getter right here, we would have a public int because the field over here is called int and the naming convention is always get and then whatever the name of the particular field is. So in this case, get age, you can see that the get over here, of course, per as per usual methods here start with a lowercase letter and then every subsequent word is an uppercase letter. That is the that is the Java convention. We will talk about Java conventions at the very end. However, basically, there is a rhyme and reason to why I am writing the way like I'm naming things like the way that I'm naming them, basically. Now, the get age over here will simply then return age and there we go. And now we have a way to access the particular private variable. However, this is basically read only, right? We are never able to set it because, well, we can only ever read it, right? So if we were to go in here, we have the ability to call get age, which is going to get us the age. Awesome. However, we cannot change it. So it's because sometimes you actually want that to happen. 
Let's just change it everywhere. I just double click on the age right here and then paste in the get age. And you will see that, for example, the birthday here will still work totally fine. So Benji's age is going to be 11. It's going to be his birthday and then it's going to be 12. And we'll see that that still works over here totally fine because the modification of the birthday over here that's okay. We can change it right this with a predefined method, right? So we have defined it so that, hey, you have to call the birthday method in order to actually change the age. This would also prevent you to, you know, you could think about it like this. You could maybe put in a, a maybe a uh, an if statement inside of the birthday method and say, hey, you know, you can't change the age so often and things like that. Just in theory, right? I'm just wanting to think about why it might be useful to not have this. Now, you can also say, well, you know, why would I not just make this public? So this is where a very important thing comes in. And that is if we are talking about we're working with, let's say, Hytale or we're working with Minecraft or we're working with any other program that already has code for us, right? Let's say we're, you know, we're doing making games in Unity. We're making games in Godot. We're using a framework that already exists. We're not just using Java without anything. What that means is that we have access to code which we didn't write. So let's take the Minecraft modding example in this case. If I want to make a new block, right, I have to use, let's say, what Fabric or Forge or NeoForge has given me. So that's the API. And then we also have to use whatever Minecraft made in their block. So we can't, sometimes we cannot influence whether or not a field is private, protected, public, or things like that. And then it's important that these things are set up, right? So that's why the getter over here is set up. And that's also for you if you, let's say, make a mod and get super popular and other people want to make mods for your mod, right? Like that happened, like Create, for example, has a lot of add-ons. Then maybe what you'll have to think about is like, okay, how do I make it so that the person knows, okay, you shouldn't change this particular variable just willy-nilly, right? Like that's that's a point to to sort of keep in mind, right? So whenever we do something, you know, private or protected or something like that, that has nothing to do with the end user, right? The end user, in theory, you can make everything public. The end user, the person that's going to play your game or play your mod or play your plugin or whatever it is, they don't care if it's public, protected, private, if it's internal, any sort of, you know, whatever it might be, they don't give a freaking, uh, they, they don't care at all. But you will care and anyone else who uses your code and also, if anyone ever works with your code, they will definitely care. And there it's very important. Now, we don't have, we've not gone through every single uh, access modifier. There's two more that I want to present to you. And those two more are final as well as static. Let's start with final because that's much easier to explain. Let's see, we make the name over here final. Now, you can see this is now a protected final string. Now, what does that mean? Well, that what that means is the following. So this is accessible. This is the same protected. But then we also have Final, and final means, let's actually write this correctly, there you go, means uh, it can't be changed. Now, how does that work? Well, we are basically inside of the constructor, we're setting the name once, right? So, and once it, the value has been given once, right? So the once we've assigned a particular value, if I now were to, in let's just say for the sake of argument, say name equals whatever, it doesn't matter, right? Uh, testing right here, you can actually see it says to us, no, 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 this can only be assigned once, right? Because it's a final variable. Interesting stuff. So that means that we cannot change it. But this is not a thing where it's the same as private because obviously, yeah, we, you know, outside of the class, we can't change the age variable, but within we can. A final really means we're setting the variable value once and then it is always going to stay that way no matter what. There are definitely moments when you need this. You will actually see this more often than you might think, uh, I, I right now genuinely have some issues coming up with an example of this, but I'm telling you, you will see it. But basically, the idea is just that once you've assigned a value once to this variable, you can never change it again. So that's the idea. So it's like a constant. You can think of it as a constant, right? If you were to have a constant called pi, obviously pi doesn't change, right? You would just put it in there and there you go. Right, and then we have the last one, which is definitely a bit of an interesting one, and that is static. For this, we're going to make a new field. Now, here comes the kicker, okay? This is going to be, you're going to have to trust me on this. It's going to be a little bit crazy. So we're going to have a public static integer, and we're going to call this the number of dogs, and we're going to set this equal to zero. So it's going to be a full initialization over here of a static variable, and it's going to be the number of dogs. Now, this is going to be, this might be working, this might not be working for an explanation, but I'm trying my best. The idea of a static variable is that instead of it being a variable, that is associated with an instance of a class, right? 
So it's associated with a particular dog, right? So we think back. Benji is a particular dog, right? This is an instance of the dog class. And this is, and Jeremy is an instance of a dog class. They have different names. They have different ages. So each of these variables is different for each dog. Whereas a static variable is associated with the class, right? So this is a, this is associated with the class. So it is the same for every dog that exists. The idea is once again, I mean, right now here we have number of dogs. We can think about it. Let's say we have this as humans, right? It's like each human has a different name, right? Each human has a different, I, I don't know, different DNA sequence, whatever you want to, you know, put in as a, as a thing. There's so many different variables that a human has. However, if we were to take the number of humans, it doesn't matter who you ask, let's say, it's going to be the same for every one of them because, you know, that's just what, what happens here, right? So, so that's roughly the idea. And what we're going to do is every time a new dog is created, what we're going to say is we're going to say number of dogs plus plus. So that means that each time we create an instance, we quote unquote globally increase this, right? So you can think of this as a global variable. It's not really, but like that's, you, you can think of it as, you know, it's similar like that, right? It's sort of a variable that exists without any instance. And what does that exactly mean? Well, what that exactly means is very interesting indeed, because it means the following. If I were to ask at the very beginning right here, I say system out, how many dogs are there, right? Now here we have created zero dogs. The first question is, how do I even ask this? You use the class. So you say dog, right? This is the dog class dot, and you can see I have now accessible to me the field number of dogs. Interesting. So how many dogs are there? Zero, right? Because I because I haven't I haven't created any dogs. However, as soon as I create two dogs, because once again we remember this calls the constructor, right? We can even control left click or middle mouse button click on this, and it's going to get us to the constructor. And each time the constructor is called, this number of dogs is going to increase. So it's going to increase once for Benji and once for Jeremy. And let's just run this and we can see now there are two dogs. Now, how many dogs do you think we have by the end, right? When we've uh, gotten the age and, you know, we had a birthday and we barked over here. How many dogs do we have now? Well, of course, we still have two dogs. We we never called the, the number of dogs over here, right? So that didn't change. Now, I'm not going to be as morbid and add like a die method. I feel like that's a little, that's, that's a little bit very morbid in this case. I'm actually going to do just that. And I'm, I'm actually going to, I'm going to actually do the opposite. And just, we're going to make another dog over here. Charlie over here, which is a new dog here, this time with charlie.png. And the name is going to be Charlie. And the age is going to be 13. How many dogs are we going to have after this? Well, it's going to increase it by one. So we're going to have three dogs. Boom. There you go. And that is the idea of a static variable, right? So, so in the very beginning, static can be a little bit confusing. I totally admit that. I understand that. But like I said, it hopefully as we go through the exercises and as we go through more, you know, more videos over here and more topics, it will get a little bit more illuminated as we're actually starting to use it a little bit more. As per usual, though, feel free to, you know, just test out things, play around with this a little bit. The code, as per usual, is available to you down below, so you can check it out, the gist, the GitHub repository. So there we have it. All right, that's going to be it for this video right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. I'll see you all in the next video. So, yeah.